Yeah, sorry about last week. Uh, you know, all kinds of stuff happened last week. So, bro, are you kidding me? I Wild heard stuff. I, 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 dude, are you kidding? Life gets in the way, man. I totally understand. Yeah. I heard you were uh, doing some kid stuff. Yeah. You know. C- congratulations on all that stuff, brother. Thanks, sir. Well, dude, how are we? Uh, how are we doing over there, man? What's Big Caps look feeling like for you? Because I wanted to kind of tackle this real quick, Joe, just because we are getting so down to the wire, dude. When it comes to, dude, we are we are really coming down to the wire to this election, and I'm starting to see like at random times, I'm starting to see some shakiness, man. And then it gets bought up, but I don't think reality has set in yet. Um. Well, we talked about this last night in the webinar, and. What we talked about was it, the move was very emotional. And so I warned everybody. I said, hey, look, you know, you don't, as a short seller, you don't want to short big, drastic drops in the spy. Because it's not organic. It's, it's almost like a reverse pump. Like, yeah, exactly. These things, exactly. These things, dude, these things always return to equilibrium. In fact, if I'm being completely honest, dude, I was longing all my favorite tech companies as down here on QQQ. Yep. Dude, I've seen this for seven years. Every time something like this happens because like Trump tweet or, oh my God, oh my God, Chicken Little, the end of the world is coming, bro, bought right back up. Yep. And I'm sure everybody saw the YouTube <clears throat> where Alex had dinner with Sykes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, and so what I'll say is this is, um, this is something I discovered in big caps months and months and months, maybe about a year or so ago when I started doing this as a short seller in small caps, if I saw that price section, I was like, Oh, sweet Jesus. Yes. I'm, I'm short. Dude, yeah, you're running to me. for it, right? Cause it looks like a waterfall death gate. You're running for a short. Yeah, bro. For real. Yeah. But, um, and the reason why I say this is, is, um, is Sykes had this, uh, this strategy where he, he called it like this pan- is like his panic dip buy, but he did it in OTCs. And, and this was years ago when I was watching something or, or seeing something. And, and I was like, dude, that freaking pattern works just the same in, in the S and P and it works even better. Like, dude, when it slams like that on a motion, it's never a good short. It's well, almost never – if you can catch the volatility like in the middle of it, like you're chasing the price. But, dude, if you're chasing the price into support, you still, it's well, going to freaking this, rally and, on and you. Dude, and this is the funniest part, Joe, because, like, dude, I was trying to tell my tab partner this yesterday. I was literally trying to tell one of my tab partners. I was like, dude, because I was having yeah. them long the big caps with me, right? So we were, like, long in stocks, man, like. I swear, I, I even scooped some Amazon, dude, like literally everything. And I was like, dude, yep. if you see this on small caps, it will never come back. If you see this on the spot, right. it will always come back. And you can see a type of move like this in OTC. Dude, this was my favorite pattern in OTCs. I remember, like, man. And, I, I didn't and dude, I learned it from I Sykes. Remember, yeah, I'll name that. drop him. I'm not afraid of it. You know what I mean? I learned that from Sykes because I that panic buy was – I was like, dude, I le-, and all of a sudden I went, holy crap. Um, oh, wow. CYDY is getting some action there. It's, <clears throat> it's dude, it, it, it's just like that is the, like that panic move right there. There's serious opportunity in that. And so, I mean, that's not a strategy that we teach. Um, but I, I warned everybody last night, hey, don't short this. I saw don't it, yep. short this. Don't be shorting this. This is very emotional. No, 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 no. And, um, and so I, I knew like in, in OTCs, when they tank like this, you don't want to short the pops because once, the, once it starts to bounce, because it could, you know, no telling how far it could grind on you. You know exactly. what I mean? Like it could grind and grind and grind and grind. I've seen him go minus 30% and then go green. And you're like, whoa. <laughs> and dude, that's, that's the spy. Because think about it. There's big money behind that dip. And so, so much big money, man. Yeah. And they're going to take, uh, they're going to take advantage of the opportunity. I didn't do it because the, of what caused the, the pullback, because it was just like, it was too emotional, bro. It was just oh, too dude, I, I literally longed like 10 different companies that I'm still swinging right now. Still, I haven't yeah. even closed them out. Oh, beyond meat, man. 
Fucking damn you. Dude, did I not call that? Damn that you. Was you sure did. Bro, I lost I, sight of it for like a week because I was trading it. I, me no, and Brian I, were both trading it and we lost sight of it for like a week while, while everything was bouncing in the spy. And when we broke that 170, that was where we were trading it on the right there. Yep. On the right up right there in that stuff was when we were trading it we were like man if this thing can really go through 170 this could go in like a single day dude joe i'm and trying we kept to, trying, I'm it, trying we remember. kept trying it and it was just like every time it hit 170 it's stuffed back down and we're like damn it come on just guess, freaking run yo guess guess how long i've been holding it look, look at this guys this is a daily chart i yeah. held from here to there where joe was starting beast. <laughs> was like, beast dude me and brian both were like dude if, if this thing can get over 170 it can go and we just lost sight of it when it finally made that 170 break yeah we were doing we were trading something else or doing something and we were like Shh. i'd i'd messaged him yesterday and i said so uh one that I let get past me was beyond me and he goes <laughs> It was like, look at this thing. It just well, Joe, ran. I was like, I know, I know, I know, dude, I know, I know Tosh is happy. Bro, I'm kicking myself because I got out at one, like 168 or 171, something. I can't even remember, man. I'd have to look, but it was about four days yeah. ago. And was, dude, I just remember, good grade. I just remember, I was like, dude, like literally I'm not that good at investing necessarily because I'm new to that, like buying right. forever. And yep. I came at it from almost like a half hybrid investor day trader mentality because this was the longest I had probably ever held along. But I was, dude, I was up too much. I was like, I have to pay myself. Like, I, I can't believe yeah. I can keep like 10% though or something. Yeah. You know, it's when do you sell on the long side? You never know, right? That's the hardest thing about that is like, you know, when do you sell? When, when do you, yeah, when do you sell? I, I don't sold know. because just, I mean, Dude, I lined it up with like 170 was a big line. It was a 170 was a big line. line. Yeah. Leave it in the will. Yeah, Tay, Tay says. leave it in the will. Tay's just collecting <laughs> assets after assets. She's just like she's monopoly right now. <laughs> <laughs> she's got she's got everything. Oh man, that's funny. Yeah, dude, it's so it. I get. I I'm not gonna knock it in any way, shape, or fashion. What I like to do, honestly, is if I feel that itch to sell. I sell and then I immediately get long again. And then I risk 25% or 50% of what I made. You know what, man? That I way really that like that. I really like that. It's like, it, and, and it, that helps me and it helps me kind of, um, um, kind of stay patient and like pocket as I go and so yeah that, that you know that's kind of it and then when you know if i take a loss you know like let's say i buy it and then i give back 25 or 50 percent or whatever number i use sure and then i have to find a technical reason to enter the trade again before i re-enter and risk again no, does Joe, that make I'm sense so that. it's like it's like if i feel this itch that i need to sell you know i mean that that's i i i I got to trust those gut feelings. You Dude, know, I'm like we, I'm, you got to trust your gut. If you don't trust your gut as a trader, you're going to die. I'm just like, waiting for this one. To, I'm waiting for this one to take off, man. This is the other one that's similar to Beyond Me, and it's called Laird Superfood. It's a recent IPO, mm. and it, I have a little bit. I've been holding it like for literally since like day one, but Laird I have some of this. Foods. And and this is, um, it's like an alternative to like all the dairy of creamer, so like coffee and stuff, but it doesn't trade. Oh. Like it's very liquid. And I was Ooh, like, yeah. shit. I thought, this would be, I thought when this came out, man, it would be like a really nice trader. It didn't, it didn't really perform that way. Cause if you see in the beginning, Joe, it like it kind of traded. Yeah. Like it, it had the volume in the beginning there. It, it had some of yep. it at least, but man, it really tapered off. And I was like, if this becomes a non-trader, I'm going to be bummed because they're doing kind of what, you know, I re look, if I do big caps or I do investing, man, I really try right. to figure out what the company is doing. Like I don't give a shit right. what small caps are doing, but I care about what these are doing. And I think that this could be the next wave, like beyond me for all the alternative mm -hmm. guys who are like really into that stuff. All they need is one distribution deal. And all those retail traders are going to come in and trade. And then, Brother, then there's your volume. Dude, 
I swear to God, man, all Jeff Bezos needs to say is, I like what they're doing. Let me yep. pick up Laird Superfood. And we just start seeing traders in this left and right. Yep. And like, you know, all um, of a sudden, you'll go from average volume of 200,000 to 20 million. Joe, I know you're. we were talking about um, snow because, dude, this <laughs> is starting to become a really good, bro. I've been in and out on every single dip. I made like, yeah, I made like a passive, like $400 today on it just for fun, man. Like, dude, nice. I've been buying every single dip. And then, yeah. and then selling the rips because <laughs> it's finally, it's finally setting up a chart. So this was something guys, if you remember, uh, me and Joe were talking about probably, I, I want to say Joe, like three weeks ago or two weeks ago, whatever it was. It was about day. three. I think it was three. I think and it was three weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, It was like three weeks ago. Right. And, and God, I mean, it was when we were down here. It was oh, when we were, one, it was two, within three, the first four, couple of days of the AP of the IPO. So 11, 12, 13, 14, literally dude, not even three weeks ago. Yeah. It yeah. It would have been there. Yeah. So what happened was guys is this is a, this was like a, um, a tech company that was doing, um, God, they're in like cloud-based stuff, you know, Warren Buffett was looking at them, they backed him, but he had a huge humongous evaluation. So this fucker opens up dude in like the two forties, then it goes to three nineteen bags, mm -hmm. everyone the same day. And me and Joe mm -hmm. were like, dude, before this becomes like a real trader, like every single day that this is going to provide some really nice range and volatility, it's got to kind of set up the chart a little bit. And now it's finally doing yep. it. Dude. I'm excited because this has a lot of range on it. Yeah, this was this type of chart is something that me and me and uh, right? AK Wildlife were talking about oh. last night. Me and AK Wildlife did a webinar on selling options to get long this yes. stock. And so when you see stuff like this that just goes sideways, this is when you want to try to sell premium in options. So basically what you would do is, is when it gets, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just make it a little better for you as <laughs> yeah. best I can. This is yeah, just bring sideways. That down. I yeah. yeah. When it, when it encompasses that, what you want to do is, 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 uh, and you've really got, you know, you've got that other level there that, uh, what just recently formed off of those recent lows right there, like 225. You've got a second line there too. And so what what um, what AK Wildlife was talking about is he go is is he was like, this is a big strategy that I like. And what he'll do is when it comes crashing into support like this, he will sell puts, okay? <laughs> which means yeah <laughs> which means that he is Serpents. yeah which yeah which means that he's bullish okay basically he's shorting the short sellers if that makes any sense basically guys like what we always say like if it's like dust and nugget which are yep. ets for gold if instead of literally shorting yep. a company you can actually just buy a certain etf that bets against and vice versa that's kind of what he's talking about here yep and so he was selling puts on, on other stocks, but this chart is something that I think honestly, because the options, you know, because of this big price action right here, like the options are going to be probably rather inflated in price. Um, and, you know, I haven't checked them, but when I just see a chart like this, I'm like, Oh, that's a good premium selling chart. Like when it goes sideways like this, that's when you want to like sell premium in, in options. You don't want to just buy calls or, or buy puts, you know, you want to sell premium because you don't know how long these balances are going to last. And that way that you put, you put time on your side. So really, you know, at support, what you would do is, you know, if you want a short-term trade, it'd be like, okay, the next time snow retests 225, I'm going to sell the 225 puts, right? I'm going to sell the 225 puts, carry oh, those yeah. into expiration and hope that they go to zero and capture the difference between there. And so that that's pretty much all that you do. But we did a webinar on that last night. So you guys go watch that webinar. If you're members, if you're not a member, I'd highly recommend joining and checking that webinar out because it was some seriously good information last night. So Bro, that's so funny. I'm, I'm actually doing exactly what AK Wildlife's doing. I'm like looking at these lines, I'm buying them, but I'm just doing it on the equity side. <laughs> yeah. And there's no problem with, you know, I don't have a problem have with that at all. Up. I'm like, dude, it don't matter what. There's a million ways to trade. You know, there's a million ways to make money in the market. Bro, as long as you have the buy there, power, it, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, but for every one way there is to make money in the market, there's ten to lose it. <laughs> <laughs> 
so you just gotta and joe that's another thing i want to talk about man is because like we were i was actually going to say this earlier but you know i had failed to plug it in is like guys the reason why these like um let me just go to an intraday chart something like the spy man the reason why things like this get bought up is you have to understand man and like, let me make this really, really, really clear to all the day traders out there. Not like the people like Tay, because Tay knows this, dude. Dude, the market is mostly investors. They are mostly long bias traders and they're guys mm -hmm. who are seeing things on sale, man. If, just because we're day traders does not mean, oh my God, everybody's gonna panic because I'm a day trader. They're looking at lines, they're looking at price action. No, dude. Most hedge funds or Warren Buffett types are waiting for these to add more to their position because there's a difference between, and like whatever this is, like say this is Amazon, say this is Tesla, Spy, whatever. There's a very big difference, man, but, uh, based on, you know, a stock on sale and yep. or just a normal stock at Lowe's, dude. Like you have to know the difference. Like, is it a shit company at Lowe's or is it a really, really, really good company on a buy the dip opportunity and most people, man, are, are waiting for things like this to add to their long-term portfolios. This is why if you look over like the average 100-year median annual return, the SPY has literally, dude, given a 10% return for the last 100 fucking years, dude. So guys yep. like Warren Buffett have made their fortunes because most people are, look, look, most people don't like getting rich slow. If you want to get rich slow, do do what Warren Buffett said. Throw every bit of your money in the S&P 500 and look in 50 years. Dude, that's how to get rich in this lifetime, but it's slow. And you're going to get, you know, things like dividends. You're going to get price appreciation. I mean, it's proved itself for the last 100 years plus. But you have to understand, everybody wants that get rich quick or they want to, if it's not get rich quick, they want to do realistic trading, which is going to get you there if you're educated a lot quicker. But look what Tay says. This is our long-term investor holding them for the will she knows you know yep. so there's ways to make money in every way but i just wanted to make that very clear because guys you have to understand when you see this don't think about this if this is the overall market don't think like a day trader dude Th there's there's fun saying oh my god thank god for this dip i want to add to my position because there's an old saying like investors love when stocks goes up but dude they they like it even more when they go down because they can add to their long term positions that they're not managing that they're at the beach just watching on their TD Ameritrade mobile app you see what i'm saying yeah yep it's yep. very different psychology man and just because we're day traders does not mean you look at everything from a day trader point of view yeah exactly sorry uh, man i just i had to rant no i'm with for you a second you dude. rant all you want baby <laughs> i let you talk to me all you want oh god uh, man <laughs> <laughs> so in slack is it possible to filter a channel so that you can only see certain mods post as they happen long shot question well delic that is actually being developed right now yes it is um there is a channel that we have that it, it's hidden right now but it'll probably come out eventually once all the bugs are worked out of it um that it highlights only um for example, like in main chat, it's only going to highlight um, uh, Bao, Alex, and Tosh. And then there will be one where you'll see, <clears throat> you'll see, it'll be like mentors, moderators, basically. Yeah. It, and you'll see all of those people's commentary. And then next to their commentary, there will be a link to click and then jump to that message in whatever channel that it's in. And yep. so like that, that's coming. It's slowly there. It's slowly progressing. It's something that we're just letting the algo run just to see, you know, what, what catches, what doesn't catch and just let it, let it play out. Yeah. Um, this stuff, this, it's coding, coming. this coding stuff, guys, when we create something like the MIC archive or something like this, I mean, it takes time and you have to understand guys, it's, it's really hard to make this stuff. And, and, you know, just be patient. Like I know yep. everybody wants stuff tomorrow, but just dude, a lot of stuff is coming and it's really cool stuff. And it'll be worth the yeah. wait. I'll say that. Yeah. That, that is going to be a very popular thing. It's something that everyone has asked for since the dawn of this chat room. <laughs> that it's, and, uh, it, dude, that and the other thing that we can't actually program ourselves. And I'm like begging, I'm still putting a fire under Slack's ass to get it started, but colored text, dude. So if yes. Joe talks, it's orange. If I talk, it's freaking green. I just if want I them to hyperlink the fucking tickers. <laughs> That's all I want. 
I just want him to hyperlink a damn stock ticker. The way I click it and move on. I'm like, dude, why do we have to design our own chat platform for that to work? I'm just like, okay, all right. Isn't that funny, Joe? Yeah, that is kind of funny, but you know what, man? It'll get there eventually. It'll get there eventually. You know, maybe Slack will get their shit together. Maybe they'll turn a profit a one quarter eventually. Freaking idiots, man. Hey, I'm long them. I got a little bit of slack. <laughs> for those who don't know, man, work just had a huge dip on the daily, man. I've been holding this for like uh, like two weeks or something like that. Um, oh, yeah, yeah look at that. I yeah, got a little the earnings. Bit. This is yeah, what I'm saying. It it, these what sons of bitches can't turn a profit in the time where working from home is the best freaking is time. To, insane, like, dude? You can't turn a profit in that moment you're not monetizing this platform well enough in my opinion is what yeah, who's in that's their problem Bro, yeah the they're not era. monetizing the platform enough it's the era of work from home and they're the only work from home stock on the internet right I now. Know. <laughs> oh, Dude, i know black and zoom how, how is that not like <laughs> Meanwhile, now, meanwhile, yeah, meanwhile, Zoom, nine cents, 15 cents, 20 cents, 92 cents. I mean, like, look at those earnings. Slack over here losing money like a Joe, bunch you, of idiots. Joe, you want to Joe, you want to hear where it gets sad? This is probably not the best opportunity to long, even on this dip, and look where the IPO started. And this right. is probably a wonderful opportunity to long. I know, right? We're all gonna look back and and Zoom's gonna be at a thousand and two. And we're gonna years. be like, why didn't we long at five? Why didn't we long at five hundred? Yeah. Because right now five hundred looks like a top, right? Right now, yeah. like that looks pretty nasty, but it, it does in until two it years doesn't from now. It exactly. Yeah. Really in two years it. from now, when we're at seven fifty, a thousand, you know, we're gonna be like shit. Bro, look at look at Amazon. Oh, you know what? It's too. It's up too much. Oh, this it's a terrible top. idea to buy. You know it at what? It's probably topping here. Yeah. You know what? It's probably topping here. Oh <laughs> shit! It's really topping oh, here. Oh wow! No, it's definitely topping. Oh no, maybe not. Oh no, yeah, dude, it's. Dude, I, I'm so bullish on Amazon. It's insane. I'm like, if you can no. get anything under three thousand, it's probably a gold rush. But who knows, man? I mean, you never know. But again. It's like, the th look, the thing, the one good thing that this pandemic did, in my opinion, the one really, really essential thing is it made people really have to rethink the way we do things and all the work from home stocks, all the work from home opportunities literally quadrupled, man. And it forced people to kind of get out of their comfort zone and complacency a little bit and be like, oh man, you know what? Maybe I really should work on my passion. Maybe I should follow that dream I've always wanted to do. Maybe I should mm -hmm. take up trading. Maybe I should learn to work from home and then I pick up something, monetize it, and then I can be with my kids all day. So I think um, at least for the non-lazy people, for all, like this pandemic really, at least in that regard, really gave a lot of people a lot of opportunity, man, especially people yeah. who owned anything tech or work from home. I mean, dude, literally anything. Look at NVIDIA for God's sakes. Look yep. at EA Sports, dude. Look at like all tech, anything work from home. Like um, my favorite right now is Corsair. This is my favorite tech IPO right now because I love them. They're like a gaming company that makes oh, really wonderful people. gaming tech. Yeah. We'll see. Don't we'll just see. Do keyboards. I know that, but that's you know that's what I think of as I think of keyboards. <laughs> yeah. So if I anything, think of their I'm keyboard. really just talking about that. I don't think this is going to be the next Amazon or anything, but you know what I mean, guys. Like like definitely do your research. But the whole point is like. I'm eyeing anything. I think that this is the opportunity of a lifetime. And I think it's just getting started of dude. When, when, when's things, the razor IPO? I have no idea. <laughs> they have the clicky keyboard. Oh, what's, what's, <laughs> what's their ticker symbol, Joe? No, that's no, what I'm saying. When is their IPO? Oh, oh, okay. I don't I think it's IPO. I would I love, I would love to buy some razor. I, swear I love to God, their I thought they were public, man. Yeah, this I, I I've always been a I've always been a Corsair guy, way over Razor, but Razor's good shit. I just like the clicky. The clicky. Like, like when you click a key, it's like Dude. I'm like, dude, I just like that sound. I hear you. I hear you. Um, <laughs> like I, I would pay for just that. Dude, you know, you ask, I, it would yeah. I, I swear to God, man, because things really catch on late. Um Oh, it's R A Z F F. Wait, what? Wait, wait what? No way. He's joking, right? Oh, it is. Look at it. This is oh, Razor. Oh, wow. Dude. That's Razor? Oof. God. Gross. That is disgusting. Gross. Oh, my God. I hope Farmer pumps this so we can short it. It's an OTC. <laughs> Jeez. 
Are we sure that this is the right? Is that the right? Yeah, it is. It is. Gaming company Razor Jesus. applies for digital. Maybe they're going a different route, you know. Maybe, hey, maybe, let's, hope, you know. let's hope Corsair does a little better than, than this 20 cent piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah, be careful buying Corsair if Razor yeah, trades at 12 Razor, cents. Like, Man, maybe not. <laughs> So maybe my not. Whole point, my whole point maybe folks are not as bullish God, as I want well, to be. Dude, if if I can uh, if I can call this next one like I was able to call fucking um, uh, the Beyond Meat, dude. I'm yeah. telling you, man. I think working from home tech stocks in at least the field of working from home. I think they're barely getting started, man. I bare. I think oh, even absolutely. Like Zoom, dude, is barely starting. I honestly, I think we're at the beginning of another bubble. I, That's I just so my too, gut I, yeah. feeling is you know we got the first hype right on pretty much all of tech right and then and then now it's the beginning of a new bubble so uh question here joe is there only good options plays a couple times a month or are there some every day there are option plays every single day every day there's an options play Bro, there's somewhere pretty much a play for anything every day whether yeah it's small caps big caps yep um, I almost never locate after open, brother. It's always in pre-market unless something came about in open, which we didn't see in pre-market. Mentioned I went long NVIDIA, then got out as you started moving your stop. Went in profit. Does that mean you're putting your stop at break even as soon as you've taken half? Or does it mean as soon as you enter the stock, it starts going up, you move your stop? to? So my rule, go to NVIDIA for yesterday and I'll show you guys what 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 I was doing here. Joe, what the hell were you doing, bro? So zoom in on this day right here. All right, so what I was playing was this, this range right there. So when it broke to the upside like this, I bought this dip and I was risking VWAP. And so when I started the position, this is just my own thing. When I started the position, um, I take a starter, risk is VWAP and it pulls back, I add more here into the previous breakout level. I'm adding more into that. And then once it goes in my favor, right here into this wick, it's now, I've gotten my ad, I got my starter, I got my ad, the stock is in my favor now. So what I do is I take a piece off. So let, let's, let's use like a 300 share example here. Okay. Or 30, fuck it. Let's use 30. Okay. 30. Right. So I longed, uh, 10 shares here and then 20 shares here. I actually did it in options, but let's just say it for stock. Okay. So everybody's on the same page. Hell yeah. So once it pushed, okay. Once it pushed to a new high, I'm taking off my 10 shares and keeping my 20 at break even, okay? I'm now, I've locked in the 10, okay? That, I've got a little bit of profit. I've got a little profit now. And then now, if I have to stop out at, if I have to stop out on these remaining shares that I got down here at break even, then um, the, uh, the worst case scenario is I've got profit from these 10 shares I sold. I'm still making a profit, but I want to let that winner run if I can to my targets, if I can. The problem that happened in the options, it looks cleaner on the equity, right? The problem that happened in the options is when this candle stuffed like this, the premium or the cost of the option just went bloop, like it fell off a cliff because the interest that people had in the stock making it to the strike price I chose that day they lost all their interest in it. And so the price of the option dropped off. And so just like in small caps, you know, when nobody wants to buy it anymore, it tanks, right? Um, it's the same thing in options when nobody wants to buy it anymore, it tanks. That or when so, you have no short sellers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so the reason why I took it off was because um, when it tanked like this, the premium fell off and I was break even at this point right here. I was now break even. I had taken some profit into the spike. And then when it fell and just stuffed back down, it fell back to my average. And so I just locked in and just went, nope, I'm out. I'm flat. And I didn't keep my VWAP stop on that because I had taken a profit 
And I, you know, I just have, I've got this mentality recently that I, I am able to take the next, I'm always thinking about the next trade, not the trade I'm in, I'm always thinking about the next trade. So when, when I take this trade, just like when Joe's on the shitter, he's waiting for the next shit. Yeah, I'm thinking about the next one. He's not move, focused not on the this current one. one. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I take this trade over here and I lose, right? This trade comes along and I'm like, eh, how do I feel? I don't know if I want to take another loss. How do I feel? I don't, I don't know if I want to take a second loss. So what I do is when this trade gets in the money, I pay myself and then immediately move my stop to break even. So at worst case scenario, I make a profit in this trade and then I'm ready to take the next trade better because I've got profit from over here. It could be small profit, it could be tiny, but I mean a minus, you know, a plus 50 bucks here and then a planned risk of 200 over here. Let's say I stop out over here for my max loss of 200. I've got 50 bucks to eat away with it. I'm only down 150 right? That looks a whole lot better to me than 200. And so that's just how my mind works when I'm kind of planning for the risk in these trades. So that's that. I dig it. Who the hell is this farmer guy? Should I watch out for him? Just watch main chat. You'll learn who that just, is. Yeah. Just watch main chat, man. What is a daily realistic? Uh, what is a realistic daily percent return for options? Um, I don't know. Depends on what you trade, to be honest with you. Watch the options boot camp series, um, and you'll get a feel for what Dude, options yeah. kind of percent gains you should watch for. My rule, I, this is just my rule. So if you guys are familiar with, I mean, Tosh, I know you're familiar with this, but you're familiar with like a floor profit. So like 100%. if you're here and this is zero dollar, like you're you're not up any money and this is like five hundred your floor kicks in at 250. So yep. basically what it means is once your P&L in the trade passes 250, your stop goes from way down here to break right here. You're not gonna give back any more than 250 bucks. You basically move it man. to a break even position. Yeah, it's kind of what I my So Exactly, yeah, that is like my absolute favorite strategy is so, is once i've got some profit boom break even stop and yo, i learned that out. from bow like like back in small caps he was like dude once you take a profit you got to move your stop to break even that's yo, the only way that you stay super consistent i taught Bow that so check this there you go i shorted <laughs> so right i learned here. it from bow i don't know where the hell it came from so dude, literally <laughs> we had never it was about a year ago man none of us had ever talked about a hard stop until I, I was just like, you know what? Mm -hmm. Now, Alex, I said, dude, I'm going to start using these because I want to walk away. And I mean, when I walk away, dude, like I was doing MIC for like two months on mobile, dude. I mean, right. I would do every PM, every call. Like I had to dude, force myself to walk what away. What was that? Didn't you have a car that had like a, uh, I just remember this from Oh Twitter. yeah, I did. Didn't you have a car that would like stream your like iPhone screen Bro, and you my, had like the DOS app on it. Yes. Or yes. So, so my last car, man, the, the dashboard I got, Oh God, I can't even remember the name of it. It was so long ago, but I, it's not my new car. I need it. It was one. several years ago on Bro, Twitter. I, literally that I saw had a, that I had a TV in my car that I'd be driving and like it stopped lights and just in my peripherals while I'm checking the stuff. I'd be watching level two, dude. Like I was a sick fuck, dude. I'd have DOS mobile open and I was watching level two of stocks. And it was on that screen in your car. <laughs> Bro, I remember, I remember oh, one time God. this guy who I know that makes like 6 million a year. He was like, how did you get that in your car? What are you doing? I need to get <laughs> Right. I, I know. Like, right. Dude, oh, when I saw that, I was like, Oh my God, I would totally do that. That's badass. I was like, bro, you make enough money, six mil, 10 mil a year. I was like, just go buy a walking level two car. Just talk Right, I know, just carry a screen with you. Hire a man to push a TV around. <laughs> Pay him like, 60K a year. Like, <laughs> I was like, bro, you make like six M's a year. I think you can figure yeah, it out yourself. I think you'll be all right. But check this out. That's so funny. I was, so what I did this morning, guys, is what me and Alex did. I think, I think Alex did the exact same thing, but I do this all the time. I short it right here, cover mm -hmm. right here, set a stop at the rest of it, break even right here. So yeah, I stopped out mm -hmm. on the second half, but dude, I, I didn't lose. Like that's the whole part. Yep. And that's how you stay super consistent guys is like, you know, it, it, if you're, this is kind of like, if your entries are good, right? 
like if your entries are good and you know your entries are good, but you don't always get your targets, what you need to do is take quick profits on a portion of your trade and then set a break even stop. Cause I mean, it, it's, dude, that was always my crux in small caps was I was like, I want this shit back at zero. What go red, bitch. Yeah, go red, bitch. And this is, that's like, <laughs> that's what I wanted. And so, I, I I always struggled with getting my actual target that I wanted. And so I, that's when I learned to, you know, take small profits on small parts of the position and then set a break even stop for the rest. Because if you're right, your entry should be damn near the top. Right. And if you're long, your entry should be damn near the bottom. Like if you're right as a short, you should be near the top. If you're right as a long, you should be near the bottom. Hell you yeah. shouldn't have to stop out break even before the opportunity presents itself to take a profit, a big profit. And so, oh, hey, some girl named Stella Lopez just emailed me, said, good morning, babe. How are you doing? That's Damn, like those, did she include One a of those pic? bots. <laughs> girl, you got a picture? No, Bro, bot kidding. or no bot, let me see that pic. <laughs> Dude, I love oh, I'll get this so like two, I'll get this like two times a week, but I'll get like Instagram DMs and like most of, 90% of my Instagram DMs are like, hey, you know, I'm interested in MIC. And I'm like, cool, man. Right. Let, me help you out. Let me tell you what we're about. And then every now and then, like 10% of them is either one of two. And when I can combine them, it's even funnier. But it's either like, hey, do you want to know about Forex? Or hey, babe, like what are you doing tonight? And I'm like, but when it <laughs> when, but when it's a hey babe, what are you doing tonight? And then I go to their page and their forex, I was like, oh hell yeah, come to Oh me. yes. <laughs> Oh, double like, whammy. This bitch trying to teach me forex. <laughs> Get the fuck out. And really, it's some dude in his mom's basement. Right. So to answer this daily percent return question, that floor is kind of what we're talking about there. So that's like what Tosh talked about is he hits this line. And then his floor is that once it touches like this, this level, he uses kind of that floor analogy. Yep. And he covers a portion here. And so instead, when he's hitting here, if I had to guess, he's probably like risking like way up here. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I will short every fucking pop from here to here to here. And I will risk here. I was and risking, I was risking this. You know me too well. Yep. Dude. Oh I will, dude, I know. If it's a massive stuff move or a death candle, I will risk the top of it every time. Yeah, because he knows that first test coming back is probably not going to touch. Oh, and look, and look, look where it failed right here. Yeah, exactly. Like, yep. Dude, there's no coincidence. There's a reason why. It, oh, this is OPTT. Yeah, oh, OPTT, OPTT, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I bet, why I I bet Harry was hoping that. for that first bounce trade again. Where's, where's he at? I bet he was like, oh, yeah, I'm along this. <laughs> that <laughs> sneaky little devil. Oh, man. So the daily percent return thing for options, what I do is when I start the position, I'm always risking like maximum 50%. Like I will risk all the way 50%. Um, unless the chart, you know, breaks a key level and the underlying chart, you know, this is, but this is always max. And, but what I have is if it's a zero and all of a sudden goes um, up to plus 20%, once I, once I touch 20% in the options, my stop immediately goes to zero. I'm no longer risking 50%. So I can, you can make 20% in options daily pretty fucking easy. Like yep. it's, it's pretty simple to do it. Um, as long as you have a good process, which, you know, is what we teach. Joe it's pretty easy to make 20%. These days, man. Joe's just it's, walking, talking, breathing, option master. It, it's pretty simple to scalp them and make 20%. So uh, what time do I wake up in the morning? Um, well, what time do I get to the screens? I get to the screens about an hour before the open. That's really all the time that I need to do the research that I do. And to be honest with you guys, during this recent time, because tech is so hot, I just have 12 charts on my screen and each one is a different tech stock. And I'm just Same. analyzing each one of them. And so, oh my God, she just made that reference. I just got it. OPTT. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> that's a little jingle there. Thank you, Tay. 
<laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. Joe, you're, um, you're I thought you'd be all over that one. Duh. No, dude, I well, you know, she's a long and I was talking about longs, and so I thought she was longing O P T T and I, I just <laughs> I didn't put two and two together until she put that song. Th- and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> it, it, Joe thought that this was an alternative to Pom Poms Out. <laughs> right? Exactly. I thought that was – I thought that's what she was saying. So, um, what? yeah, so what time do I wake up? I mean, I wake up at – so it's my my time. It's 7.30. So, so it's 8.30 market time that I get to the screens. I'm up before that, make, drinking a cup Joe, of coffee. Joe, what time do you go to bed? Taking a poop. Uh, what time do I go to bed? What time you when go you to bed? do? When you do? He's like, he's like, when X videos turns off. <laughs> Dude, recently, recently, um, so I moved my office set up, like I moved my trading setup into our master bedroom. Oh, and, dude, uh, your poor wife, <laughs> your poor. And wife. so, she was never in the bedroom anyway. She's always in the living room, they and so are. like. We had to like move our TV up. We got like huge ten foot ceilings, and so we had to move the TV in the in the master room, like way up on the wall because my office is like right under the TV, or would have been right where the TV is. And so we had to move it like way up. And dude, I found myself just like, I just like well, I just recently, man, I'll just turn a movie on and like in the middle of the night, I've been like waking up for some weird reason. I'm just like waking up and then I'm like super awake, you know, you like know it's you? not like, and I don't know why, like, Joe, I'm like Joe, I'm gonna super t- awake. Dude, I'm going to tell you why. This is why I will never keep a uh, computer set up or my main desk in my bedroom ever again, bro. I'm not kidding. It, according to Nikola Tesla, it's all energy, spiritual, blah, 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 whatever, dude. If a setup dude, is I in the room, it. It, you're going to like somehow tap into it, dude. Like you, it, when I used to keep my setup in my bedroom, bro, I couldn't fucking sleep, man. I yep. could not sleep. It's like, dude, I've been going to sleep later than I have ever went to sleep in the last three years. Oh, like I, I'm I, usually, bet, I'm not, I'm not a late night person. Norm like nowadays I used to be, you know, I used to be 2 AM, 3 AM. I just don't fucking like that anymore. Dude, I, I love an early morning. I love a sunrise a lot more than I love a sunset. And so okay. I'm like, I, I'm, I need separation of church. And bingo, <laughs> dude, bingo. I cannot keep a setup in a bedroom, man. I'd rather keep yeah. it in like the freaking garage. Dude, for real. Yeah, it's, and so it's like, I'm, I'm just like, uh, I'm waking up and I'm just awake, but I'm also, I'm, I'm also like sitting at my desk longer nowadays because it's in my, it's in my bedroom. Well, now and it's in so, a real state of comfort. <laughs> dude, for real. Yeah. It's like, I'm in my room. It's, it's, it's confined, it's private. And it's like, and then when it comes time to go to my wife goes to bed, she's back there and I'm talking to her and I'm doing something over here on the screens or, and so it, it's, um, it's and it's dangerous it's dangerous i'm dude i'm up all 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 kinds of hours now looking at this looking at screens looking at charts looking at this and so and yeah, also looking right at now, charts just, nice one yeah gotcha yeah, yeah 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 my wife is sleeping in the bed right behind me none of that happens <laughs> <laughs> hey babe turn away <laughs> gotta put something on the monitors put yeah. turn away babe i need the me time yeah my, now my it's virtual um, life. Yeah, for real. So yeah, I wouldn't tell anybody to ever put their I wouldn't I wouldn't I don't hate it. Like I like having my office and they'll give it two more months. But but I definitely well back when I lived in San Antonio before um I went full time, I've almost always had my office in the master room. Really? Until recently I actually had my own office space. And um and I, I, I don't know why, but I can just find more privacy when it's in the bedroom because we have this rule that it's like, okay, kids don't get to come in our bedroom all the time, right? You know, it's like, okay, you guys stay out there. You stay in your room. You do your own thing. We stay in our own places. And Taze is in her freaking sun house thing. Oh my God, that's greenhouse. Dude, that is, if, yeah, if T- I had Taze like a- is like out back on her if patio I, bro i gotta tell you if i had a property like tay um i would be i would seriously, i would put in the back house too like you need a yeah. separation dude 
Dude, I've honestly considered renting a space. Oh, dude, I've dude, literally like considered, drive I, I to considered, every day. Joe, I've literally what I would love to do, like to be honest work, with you, dude. is dude, yes. That's what I was about to say. Is I would love, dude, if you lived near me or I lived near you, I would freaking go halvesies with you on an office space that we had our trading setups. Dude, we need to, like, if I move, I if I move to love Texas, that. if I move to Texas, let's just buy a condo together and make that our trade. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> come one, come all, whoever can fit in our yeah. fun condo. The trap house. Yeah. yeah MIC, <laughs> MIC trap house condo. Bro, that's what, yeah, exactly. It would be a deduction too, because it would Thanks be office God. space as well. Hold on. And hold on. I got to see there's, something here. There's a bunch of WeWork spots here in Dallas too. But oh, anyway. Oh, yeah. Joe, where are you at? Houston? No, Dallas, bro. Oh, Dallas, shit. I always get those. All right, all right. Let's see what's available, man. Yeah. Here, if we're, <laughs> ju if we're just going to make it like literally a write-off for trading, what do you think? Like 300,000 bucks? 300, 300 top. <laughs> Put Dude, you, can buy a damn, you can buy a damn nice condo for 300K in Texas. Can you really get shit like this for 167? I bet this is a full, oh my God, full three bedroom house. Get out of here, dude. Come on, Texas hood. is just not even fair. That's the man. hood, bro. That's the hood. <laughs> Who cares, dude? It's trapping yeah. it easy. <laughs> but hey, 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 it's super cute. 7,000, dude. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I could set dude, my I desk up joking. right here. It looks like, they look, looks like they put the vinyl flooring down. Joe, you got you that loud, sitting? you know, like you remember these from like apartments when you got that loud ass AC unit oh, that kicks yeah, on yeah, and yeah, slams sure. the door every time. So, <laughs> well, dude, I call this corner. We'll put your desk right here. We'll have a like, a yeah, exactly. And Alex Tay can even like trade outside if she wants. Like, yeah, we can, we can set up a table out here for Tay. She'll be over there. <laughs> We'll be the only ones in the house, and she'll be like, "I just have to trade outside. It's just oh, how I do things." Dude, and that is hysterical, <laughs> man. That is so funny. But dude, yeah, you can buy a nice damn, you can buy a damn nice place for three hundred grand in Texas. That is just it's especially in Dallas. Texas is, Texas is like, it's like it's not even on Earth, man. It's like the real estate's so good. It's like it's it's like yep. Elon starting on Mars or something. It's like just starting all over. It's like all else. Yeah, everybody's world. like. We're in a recession. I'm like, I live in Texas. Joe's like, I live in Texas. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> yeah, what's a recession? We ain't in a recession. Have you seen how fast houses? Like, dude, dude, that house has been on the market for five days. I guarantee you in two weeks, it's gone. It won't be on there I'll, anymore. I bet, dude. I'll bet. It's gone. Gone. Uh, I Chinese will... coffee. Oh, is that what, is that LK's new symbol? Oh, LKNCY? That's what that one is. I remember that. Uh, didn't this is L beating recently, right? Ooh, look at that pump. I remember this because it wasn't this the one where they took a beating from here to here because mm -hmm. like news of like fraudulent or something? Mm -hmm. oh, and then man. they got delisted. Sneaky bastard. Went to the man. OTC market. Oh yeah. Oh luck and coffee. Fucking coffee. Dude. Except with an L. Sneaky, <laughs> sneaky bastards. Look at that squeeze. Man. Yeah, that's what was it? What ooh. was the one we were looking at? A wreck though? Oh yeah. Do you guys yeah, have that any look, questions? That for looks Joe? like a wreck, to be honest with you. <laughs> that is a wreck. <laughs> that is a wreck. Guys, do you have any questions for me and Joe while you have us? Um Yeah, last uh, ten minutes here or so. Yeah, we'll last take, ten minutes, man, it's just so we can rest our Take everything. Everything small cap, large cap, whatever you got. Oh, here you go. From the YouTube recommendations on how to keep trading, practicing my pr trading or practicing my process when work and life balance makes it hard to get in front of the screen at the open. I'm in Phoenix and things are crazy in life lately. Nice Phoenix, man. Shout out. Um, well, you know, the, here's the thing about trading, man. It's, it's very important to get your life right first before you trade. Or if you are trading, I'm not saying pause your trading, but I'm just saying, look, man, you're going to bring your real life situations into your trading if you're not careful. So you just got to be really careful on if you're fighting with your girl, if you're moving, if you're whatever you're doing, man, it's, it's just going to be your boss is the dickhead. Dude, yeah, yeah, your paycheck real, wasn't enough last week. You know, you didn't <laughs> get enough hours at your job. You know, you got to deal with the shitty fucking customer that always Dude. thinks that they're right, even though they're a dumbass. I mean, it it's could like affect your trading. Yeah, absolutely. That could.
or, you know, you've got a big deadline at work that, you know, that comes into play. There's all kinds of shit. There's all kinds of shit that can happen. And so when I worked um, full time and traded at the same time, dude, there was many days where I missed the market open and I'd be here. Like I'd get here at zombie times and I learned a lot of hard lessons at zombie times. Sure. And, and so it, it would be, it'd be tough. It'd be tough. And so the best advice I have is, is you've got to continue to save, pay off all debt. You don't go full-time trading with debt. That's no, how you die. No, no, no. That no. is how you die. Um, you know, you don't, it, it's what, who posted that the other day where they said, act your wage? Were you in that oh, group? Oh, it was that, um, it was that Texas guy. Uh, when, yeah, when no, you're... Tennessee, Tennessee, Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey, go. that's right. Yeah, he's Tennessee. Um, oh, he's Tennessee, all right. Yeah, he, he talks like he's from Texas, but no. <laughs> he really does. He ain't. Big he's hat, no cattle. Yeah, he, he, yeah, the big, yeah, big hat, no cattle saying, yeah. So it's, it's that saying that he says is act your wage. So the dream to trade on your own, the dream to become a full-time trader is what most people get into this business doing. It's the dream to break free of corporate America, of having a boss, of whatever it is. But trust me when I tell you that the stock market is the worst boss in the world. She's a bitch. She's a royal bitch. She's okay. A Karen and, times 10. and she will, she's very unforgiving. The old lady stock market will run you ragged. Um, and then and you she's know, like that, an inappropriate and, lover at times. Yeah, too. exactly. Like, it's, it's, it's a really bad relationship. It's, it's all it's, just <laughs> homogenized together. <laughs> It's not healthy, guys. It's not healthy. It's not a healthy. If if somebody described to me, like, let me describe the stock market to you. When the highs are high, they are so high. And when the lows are low, they are so low that you just want to end it all. Have if you somebody had any described with taking crack. Right. Dude, if somebody described their significant other as that, like when the highs are high, they're so high, and when the lows are low, they are so low you would just be like, dude, divorce that. Bro, the, the, the stock market's an abusive relationship that you can't leave. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it truly is. Truly is. Because whether it's abusing your mental capital or not, it's abusing your wallet, whether it's abusing both. If it's not abusing both, one yep. will get abused. <laughs> yep. But don't stop learning. Don't stop learning the stock market while you're working. You know, that, that's, that's what you have to do. You have to, you have, to have a job that yeah. creates income for yourself. And then as you let that income stack and grow, you use that to continue to pay off loans, pay off debt, pay off credit well, Joe, cards, should, pay off cars. We should probably say it like this, right? We should probably say it like this. If you can't afford to trade right now, but you can afford an MIC membership to learn, dude, it doesn't matter if you're trading or not. You could trade on a simulator yep. uh, for, you know, and still only pay one ninety seven a month or get an annual and get a nice reduced rate from me. And yep. you're just, dude, you're going to be able to at least learn the whole way. So by the time you have real money saved up, you're out of debt, dude, you're ready to go. Yep. Absolutely. And also remember this, speaking that act to your wage thing, uh, <laughs> Brian posted this to his Instagram and I thought it was funny. It said, if the new PS5 is more, it, <laughs> if the new PS5 That's price awesome. is a bigger number than your credit score, you don't need one. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the PS5 is coming in at a cool 599. Dude, yes. If your credit score is lower than the price of the PS5, you don't you need do, you a did PS5. not earn a freaking PS5. Dude, yes, it it's it's um oh man, it's something. And so those of you that are still working and stuff like that, don't let you know like don't let laziness like overtake you yes. because um it's easy to get complacent when you know, you have a job that there's always a check every two weeks, or there's always a check every 30 days. Or there's always a check every month or every week or whatever it is. It, what is it? 
You can't the, afford something until you can the, buy it twice. This is the best quote of all time. If you can't buy it twice, you can't afford it. And what he means by this is yep. anything. If you can't, if you can't afford to buy that seventy thousand dollar Mercedes twice, you can't afford it. So why the hell would you buy one with five grand in the bank? Yeah, I, you know, I mean, Jay Z was a dope dealer, but he's a very intelligent man now. <laughs> now he's a fucking billionaire investor. Can you believe it? Oh. And, but it, it's it's simple advice, but it's good advice, it's and it's something that will advice. always save you. So think about what Bao says. He always recommends two years of savings before you ever go into full time trading full time. Well, quitting your job, like quitting that. your job exactly. So it he always recommends something like that, and so yeah, or yeah, sorry, before quitting your job, not trading full time, but before well, and, quitting and, and, quitting and, a job and just going out on your own, having well, two years. Like, the way I like to say it, man, is, that, and we can, you know, pretty much end here with the psychology of this. Guys, we want to leave you with what a mindset looks like that's growth for your future. It's all about priorities. How many times have me and Joe said this? If your priority is getting the new iPhone over an MIC membership, dude, what the fuck are your priorities? To have new cool dude, tech and still not know how to make money that can buy you unlimited iPhones if you learn the right way? Like, it, it, dude, it doesn't even compute in a logistical manner. Like, if, you're new, if your priorities are the PS5, dude, you, you, you know where your priorities lie. Just stay broke, yep. dude. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, if, you, to be blunt, if you're going to go like, out there and, 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 and go buy a $600 gaming piece of equipment and you're still you failing at trading you don't want this bad enough you just don't and want i it. i haven't seen that comment anywhere i'm not saying people are out there buying the ps5 and shit but i'm just saying it in rest because i know a lot of stock traders are gamers yep and i'm personally not i i don't i i own an xbox because my son likes to play Rocket League. And there you go. Oh, dude. That I'll, is I'll about the, the extent of that. Yo, dude, I'm not much of a gamer, but I am on certain instances, and there's only two when, like, a new Final Fantasy game comes out because, like, those mm -hmm. RPGs are so fun since I was a kid. Man, I love delving into that, like, deep, deep world. And number two is, like, if there is new tech, like a PS5 with a new Call of Duty, bro, you won't see me again for, like, two months. Dude, I'll be the I, first in line. I'm with you on that. Shit. It's, it's like, it's, it's, there's a, there's a fascination for 30 days and then it's gone. And then it's gone. Because yeah, it's gone. Here's, like, what, I just, I, here's what goes through my mind is this is literally not making me any money. I'm gaining no skill from this. I'm gaining nothing from this, except I'm just sitting here playing a game naked on a beanbag eating Cheetos. Definitely like, naked. Definitely. I am. I am literally what I make fun of every day right now. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't fucking do this anymore. Here's the difference. Here's the and difference. I, and I just hang it up right there. I'm like, you sorry sack of shit. You know, I am, I'm the weakest of saints. You Joe, know? Joe's and, 20 Twinkies deep and he just looks at himself and goes, I loathe you. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. I'm looking at myself shoving a Twinkie in my mouth. You're like, you fat fucker. Uh, <laughs> but it tastes Still so getting good. killed by a 12-year-old with a exactly. better candy bar. Right. Yeah, exactly. I'm Here's like, the thing, okay, though, guys, it's a thing of priorities. So look, man, if, yep. if you don't know how to trade, you don't have like something like an MIC membership, or at least a book that'll teach you how to get better at trading. And, and that's where your priorities lie. I mean, just look in the mirror. But if you're like me or Joe, and we work fucking seven days a week, and, and, and we make money trading, and we do this, our priorities can go get a PS5, dude. So yep. Like just, just again, man. Like and I'm we, still not gonna buy one. And Joe's still not gonna. <laughs> still, he's the smarter of the two I'm of us. Still not gonna fucking buy one. I ain't gonna buy one. The saying is, is uh, what is it? Um, live like nobody wants to, so you can live like nobody can. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So you <laughs> live, you live the life of like, you don't want to live like nobody wants to live like they're poor, right? when you have a little bit of money to go and spoil yourself, you know, you spend these fucking days slaving away and you got to go spoil yourself. That's what keeps you sane. You know, you got to have something like that. That keeps you sane. Yeah, and, man. Like, dude, I'm going to go buy a new thousand dollar golf club set here. Right. To get them in stock. Like you have to treat yourself every now and then, you know? Exactly. And that keeps you sane, but don't go, you know, like, especially the iPhone, God's sakes. What a oh, waste man. of money. It, dude, and then people will say, well, I just write it off on my taxes. Well, really, all you got was a percentage of it back. 
Yeah, literally. You know what I mean? You didn't you didn't get to write off the entire thing. All you got to do is reduce your income by that same amount. It's not a one hundred percent like like I didn't get a hundred percent of that back. Yeah, unless it's literally your company phone, like made. Right. Yep. And like if you actually, can do that, actually for and MIC that, because then you can probably afford it. For my for <laughs> for MIC, mine my my phone number, I have a business line, so I mm-hmm. could probably write off the entire iPhone. But unless you can do that, you should not be kind of giving me a new iPhone. <laughs> right, dude. Yeah, you don't fucking need it. I've got the same iPhone. I've got like the, I think I've got the eight, the plus, and I haven't I haven't bought a single other one since. Joe, you're I, either and, super smart with money or super frugal. I don't know which one. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm actually like really frugal or anything. I just like, I, I just, um, now if it's like a new monitor, if it has to do with trading, I buy it, oh, you know, and that, and that's where and I'm like, you know, a new speaker for my new speakers for my desk to listen to music or some shit like that, or, a new monitor because I don't like that this one does this or this one does that, or, you know, I'm always going to have the the best I can have in that Avenue, but like a phone, I mean, that's a phone. I'm like, you know? can they just make hologram monitors already? Can I just see this shit pop off the screen already? Yeah. I see a stuff yeah. Pays over here. Me in the jaw. Mr. Green screen. I bought that green screen for 86 bucks. Tay. It was $86 on Amazon <laughs> and I hung it from my ceiling myself paid five bucks for all the hardware at home Depot. So Flash, it was 90, it, it was $91. Flash, <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? Don't, don't <laughs> dangle the dream in front of me and take it away. What is hollow lens, man? Yeah. What is the hollow lens? Give me, give me 3d charts, bro. Give me 3d charts. I'm not to go look at that. I know. For Let's real. Open a tab here. Hollow. Yeah, here's the here's the realistics though, Joe. I'll go buy a PS5. I'll be the first one in line. I'll go play it for a week, get sick of it, then hawk it on eBay for double. <laughs> Dude, yes, for real. Dude, yeah. people people are buying the PS5 right now. I already saw on eBay because I know how this works. I used to be one of these guys. But dude, they'll literally like like um, flipping watches too. Like if you can get your hands on a certain type of watch model, you can double it. Dude, people are buying, selling, I'm sorry, selling their reserves for the PS5 for double. So like if they reserve it for $599, it's on eBay for like $1,200 and you get the receipt to go pick it up because there's such limited supply. <laughs> wow. Dude, I'm telling you, you can flip anything, bro. Microsoft HoloLens mixed reality technology for business. Get out of here. What the hell is this, dude? God, I love tech. Oh, shit. Yo, we just invented a whole new way to trade, baby. Or watch Pornhub. (laughs) One or the other. Oh, wow. (laughs) The ultimate mixed reality device. If your world sucks as bad as we think it does, buy our new HoloLens 2. Has life got you in a rut? Is it dull yeah. as shit? Then buy our new HoloLens. <laughs> Are you tired of living in your own home? How about you live in someone else's home in your own home? How Are you tired sound? since you quit your job to work from home, but now you're tired of working from home? Let's work yeah. on the beach. Go work back in your office from home. This is where it becomes the Joe Rogan show. Oh, this is so this is like uh this All right, is just funny. show me just show me how to work from Kate Upton's bedroom and then I'll I'll get this. I there you, there we go. Now can, can can you show me how to do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we load in like our own virtual <laughs> background? Can I just be a fly on the wall while I work? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, there it is. If you if you will live like no one else, later you can live like no one else. Yep, exactly. <laughs> like, does it cost, does it cost a more than a PS5? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Probably Guys, any not. closing questions while we have a couple minutes? Any closers? Who got some questions? Who got some questions? There's All a good? Buy now button. Holy now, shit, that's $3,500. Whoa. This is? Yeah. Get out. So do they take cash or check? <laughs> yeah, right. This does what I think it does. <laughs> For more information or to speak to a specialist, 
Call us at 1-866-425-4709, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific time. <laughs> yeah, we could promo this right now. HoloLens 2 is the most comfortable mixed reality device available with industry-leading solutions that will deliver an immersive experience. Dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll send him an email. Maybe we'll partner with him. We can get a couple of these on board. <laughs> right? <laughs> Especially for the trap house in Texas. Dude, yes. All enhanced by reliability, security, scalability of the cloud, and AI services of Microsoft. Get started right away with this off-the-shelf applications or build. Ah, flash, using. dude. I believe you, wow. man. You can watch charts from TradingView for now. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys well then i'll close it with this we are um definitely here to take care of you man um i know a couple people wanted the annual with the accelerator course so i'm doing something there for you if you have any questions about upgrading getting access to anything signing up in general questions about mic if you want to know you know what i really think about joe kelly just text me right here man we'll get all the answers you need but uh dude joe this was awesome man seriously this is always so a good time week, man Tay, funny as always, keep keep building that will, man. I'm telling you, I need to learn how to hold like Tay, dude, or I'd be doubling and tripling my money. I don't want to learn how to be like Tay. I want to get related to Tay. That way I, I can think I, that here's will. what I feel like Tay does. I feel like Tay will buy something like I bought Beyond Meat at 130. And then I feel like she will tell her broker to change her password so she can't fucking log in. Right? <laughs> how the hell can you hold the way Tay does? I the level of patience that she has, man, is My just. God, man. I know. I don't. I don't have it. But all right, buddy. We'll all right, talk buddy. to you next See time, you, man. Yeah, next week, man. Let's do the damn thing. See you guys. See ya. See you, bud.